Today, you're working in the emergency department. Your next patient is a 40-year-old female with shortness of breath. At triage, she has the following vital signs. Tachypnea, tachycardia, hypotension, and hypoxia. You immediately put her into a resuscitation bed with cardiac monitor. You also put her on high flow oxygen by mask. On examination, your patient's unable to lie down. She sits upright in a tripod position. When you examine her, she has various signs of respiratory distress, including tracheal tugging, supraclavicular and intercostal indrawing, and abdominal breathing. She also has one word dyspnea. When you listen to her lungs, her breath sounds are decreased globally with no wheezes. Her husband, who's with her, tells you that she is a known asthmatic, and she has been intubated in the past for asthma. She has been battling a cold for the past three days and noticed she has been more short of breath. She has also run out her regular puffers. She has no recent travel or fever. You decided that this patient is having a severe asthma exacerbation. You ask the nurse to put in an IV. You also start the patient on subutamol and ipratropium nebulizers continuously. You gave one dose of hydrocortisone, 125 milligrams. You also ask the nurse to put in a one liter normal saline bolus after the IV is established. After 15 minutes of continuous nebulizer, the patient states she's feeling better. She's able to say three or four words. Her respiration rate has gone down. Oxygen saturation is better. She has minimal tracheal tugging and indrawing. When you listen to her chest, she now has better air entry. And now you hear wheezes throughout her chest. You continue with giving the patient more subutamol nebulizers and watch her to make sure that she is feeling better. You decide to reassess her in about two or three hours' time.